And now we can move to our last part of presentation with uh, neurofeedback training. And uh, I will ask Tatiana to make us a short description of this method. Tatiana. Um, so our past, uh, our last uh, part of the webinar is dedicated to biofeedback. It is the last part, but not least. Uh, biofeedback is technique that enables an individual to uh, learn how to change their physiological parameters. So uh, during biofeedback, the person can change the physiological parameters that kind of parameters he can change. It could be the um, amplitude of uh, EG or power spectrum of EG, amplitude of a migram, heart rate, breathing rate, and others. So the clinical study shows that the biofeedback alone or in combination with other behavior method is effective method for treatment the different uh, medical and psychological uh, disorders such as um, headache, um, um, attention deficit hyperactivity disorders, and anxiety, uh, disab learning disability, um, and um, substance abuse and others. So, as I said, the children with attention deficit hyperactivity disorders, children with ADHD, they are the candidate for biofeedback. And um, the um, electroencephalography of these children is characterized uh, by excessive fat width in frontal region. So a question arises: If the um, can if they uh, can normalize the EEG of this uh, person, uh, it will help us to know. It will help to normalize the state of uh, health. So does biofeedback uh, can reduce the high, high, hyperactivity uh, of patients with ADHD? Does uh, biofeedback uh, can improve the attention of these children? And uh, clinical study shows that uh, biofeedback is a, can be a very effective method for this patient. But how we can explain children to change his EEG? It's impossible because it's unclear for them. But uh, we, if we ask patient to increase their music volume, or we ask them to uh, make this move, it would be clear for me. It's not very easy, but it's clear. But our software, neural spectrum software, uh, can uh, create the template that the fish movements depends on the uh, the EG of this person. So, if the uh, patient with ADHD reduce the fat rhythm in frontal region, the fish swim and the music loud becomes louder. So. In the basis of biofeedback is the uh, visualization of um, physiological parameters. And we can create this visual visualization with help of some movement, films, photos, and with music, uh, with game and something that. Um, so the biofeedback training uh, is uh, performed in accordance with the protocols. Uh, protocols is a uh, uh, design of biofeedback treatment. The protocols determine the, uh, the physiological parameters which we'd like to change and uh, protocols determine the number of uh, electrodes which we should apply. Uh, the protocols determine the, um, the number of trainings which is needed for effective therapy. And uh, Neurosoft uh, recommended to use uh, protocols which was which efficacy was clinically proved. Uh, so um, the biofeedback therapy consists of um, several steps. Uh, the two steps is a pre-training pre-training assessment of psychological parameters. 
So in case we have a child with ADHD, we should assess uh, parameters of the attention with help of some psychological techniques or questionnaires and something. So we can uh, perform the conversation with uh, children, child's uh, parents and their teachers to assess their behavior. Uh, the next step, it is the pre-assessment uh, pre-training sorry pre-training assessment of uh, physiological parameters which we'd like to change so we for patients with ADHD we should to uh, perform EEG recording and to assess the theta rhythm so it would be pre-training assessment uh, the main part of the biofeedback therapy is uh, biofeedback training of course and in a case with uh, and if of the uh, EEG is physiological parameters which we, which we need to change. We can call this technique neurofeedback. Uh, so uh, the um, biofeedback, neurofeedback or biofeedback consists of uh, several um, biofeedback trainings and the number of the training may be 30, 40. Uh, and we can perform this training uh, one a week, maybe twice a week, in accordance with the protocols. And of course, at the beginning of our therapy, uh, we should help, we should loan patient to uh, change his physiological parameters. Uh, after when the biofeedback therapy um, complete, uh, is finished, uh, we perform the post-training assessment of physiological parameters and the psychological parameters. So uh, we, for patients with ADHD, we should perform the uh, calculation of parameters of attention and we should perform EEG to calculate the power spectrum of that read. And we should compare the pre-training uh, parameters and the post-training parameters. And it's uh, very important to assess the efficacy of biofeedback ter therapy. And so I think Alexei uh, is going to show you a biofeedback training, which we can perform with help of neuron spectrum software. Yeah, thank you, Tatiana. Uh, we will use uh, the same device and the same patient for uh, neuro neurofeedback training. Uh, I'll start new examination with help of my special template of exam neurofeedback. Put patient data as usual. And you can see that now I have a work table for neurofeedback. Uh, I can see here the window for the patient and the window for the doctor. Usually for neurofeedback training, we use dual screen uh, mode. Uh, we use two displays, one for the doctor and another for the patient. But today for demonstration via Zoom, uh, we can use only one screen. Uh, because our patient can see the screen uh, uh, behind, behind him. So, what we can see in this uh, window, uh, EEG uh, traces area, not only EEG, we can use uh, uh, for neurofeedback EEG, ECG, uh, respiration traces, SpO2 level, temperature, uh, EMG, amplitude and, uh, and other signals. Uh, also, we see, can see here uh, neurofeedback training successfulness trend and the uh, man manager, uh, neurofeedback manager for the doctor, where we can select uh, neurofeedback template. For example, we can choose alpha training uh, for attention uh, uh, deficit and hyperactivity disorder, as Tatiana said. Um, we can select the uh, neurofeedback template, which contains one uh, as here or several uh, different conditions. According to these conditions, software will uh, calculate the uh, training uh, successfulness and will show the feedback according to this uh, successfulness to the patient. Uh, 
Now let's try to start our training and we'll see how it works. By the way, I can switch on or switch off the patient window. For example, before uh, training, I can assume the current activity of uh, EEG of this patient without neurofeedback. For example, here, now I can see the current parameters value. It means that alpha rhythm for this patient now uh, alpha, rith alpha, alpha rhythm index for this patient now is 10, about 10. And it is quite good uh, for this uh, diapason, which uh, can be uh, adjustable. For example, it is 11. And the successfulness is quite good uh, for now. And when we see that it is quite easy for this patient, we can start learning and show the patient, uh, the patient window. Here, the task for our patient is to move octopus uh, as higher as better. So if the successfulness of the uh, training is 100 percent for example i can show it for my patient here now patient can see the successfulness uh, if it is a, a children a child you can uh, make it with uh, some bar without digits like this but we have adult patient here and when we understand for example that uh, this condition is quite easy for our patient now we can change the condition of training and you can see that results of uh, successfulness is lower now we can increase and you can see that current parameter of alpha uh, rhythm index is uh, quite similar it is the same but the successfulness is lower because we changed the diapason of uh, this training uh, also we can add another condition for example uh, also, we can choose EEG rhythm index level, but we can select, for example, beta rhythm, or we can, for example, select some custom uh, diapason, for example, from 13 up to 25 hertz, and we can set up uh, the uh, index uh, diapason. For example, we want to make this index more than uh, 10 percent uh, 10 percent for example like this and we can see also the current value of this rhythm of this custom uh, range and the current successfulness it is 100 percent now because it is a very easy task for this patient we can switch off this uh, condition and it will not take part in calculation of common successfulness if we switch it on now the result successfulness is the arithmetic uh, averaged number of these two conditions successfulness we can add more conditions here for example we can add eg rhythm indexes ratio not only level but ratio between different uh, indexes we can add head rate condition for example we have ecg uh, ecg the channel here and we have some uh, head rate frequency it's quite high and we can put additional condition here you can see that now it is inside this diapason now it is out of this diapason and the successfulness is not 100 so this condition will help the patient to uh, sit still relax and so on to make the head rate lower uh, to include it in this diapason you can make it more difficult for this patient for example like this and so on uh, also we have a lot of uh, different predefined uh, templates for example relax training I disconnect my device sorry uh, relax training which contains 
three, uh, three condition. Uh, I switch off uh, the last one because we have no respiration uh, channel here in our montage uh, today. We have uh, alpha rhythm condition and ECG, it means a head rate uh, condition. Also, we have a lot of predefined uh, feedback types, uh, different games, for example, some racings where the speed of uh, the car is depend on successfulness of our training. We can uh, use, for example, some slideshow with some family pictures, for example, which are uh, interesting for our patient. Uh, we can put here some audio files uh, to make some sound feedback. Uh, also, we can select uh, some video film and other video content for our patient and so on. A lot of different uh, kinds of uh, feedbacks. So after training, we can stop the procedure and can check the uh, trend of successfulness. And if we will uh, move through the through the traces, we will also see the current successfulness in the trend window, and we also will see the current uh, uh, conditions for training and even uh, current uh, values for diapasons for each condition. For example, I'll show you here we change. You can see here we changed uh, our diapason for our patient and a few minutes ago we changed the number of conditions and then we changed the whole, uh, we add the ECG uh, condition and then we changed the uh, template here. All these uh, actions were saved uh, in this examination as a history and most of all you can compare one examination with another next examination to understand the dynamic uh, of this patient. For example, if we need to uh, decrease or increase the alpha rhythm index, uh, you can compare uh, one examination with another to understand if your patient's going in the correct direction, in the right direction. So, uh, as usual, at the end, we will prepare report template uh, where we can get uh, all uh, this information like this. And we also can put some uh, phrases from glossary and uh, put some traces, for example, if it is interesting uh, for this examination. Uh, I think it is all I wanted to show you about neurofeedback. Uh, 